Hey everybody, my name is Joe and welcome to Tabletop Theory. Today, we're gonna talk about how you can come up with opening credits that work for your party that you can use every single game session to grab your players and get them involved in the game right away. Let's get started. Today, I get to share something that I don't think I've ever seen another storyteller or a GM or a DM do. I might be the person who came up with this. If I'm not, please let me know in the comments because I'd love to know how other people do this. I'm talking about opening credits. This is something I came up with a few years ago, and when I say a few years ago, I mean probably close to about 15 years ago when I was in high school. God, was I in high school 15 years ago? Hang on a minute. What year is this, 2020? Nope, 17 years ago, that's when I was in high school. The point is, I came up with this idea because I wanted a way to get my group focused on what was going on. And I know some GMs like to tell their players to put their phones down, or some GMs don't let allow laptops at the table. I found that using opening credits is a great way to get your players involved right away and get them to be excited to start play. So what do I mean by opening credits? It's actually pretty simple. You basically are gonna write a piece of flavor text that features everybody in your party, what they're good at, that kind of puts them in the setting and you're gonna set it all to music. I know that every time I've done this, a lot of my players have really enjoyed it. They really feel like that it helps them to be engaged in the game and it just, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy writing them and they enjoy hearing them. So just keep in mind, you don't have to do this. This is not a requirement. You don't need to do this if you're a new GM, but if you enjoy it, then consider using it. So I'm just gonna read this off the sheet because the important thing, I think, for this kind of description, when you give this delivery to your party, you're gonna be doing exactly what I'm doing. You're gonna be sitting in front of your party reading off a sheet of paper. Enough dilly-dally, let me actually read through this. The hull of a ship crashes through the waves tossing up spray. We look up and see a city on the water made out of timber, piers, and beams. Two worlds exist side by side here, one from the arid north and one from the burning east. The crest of a black lark bird and a golden koi fish enter the screen from either side and combine to create a new sigil of the bird fighting the fish. The text of an unfamiliar language written in silver and gold covers the sigil. Below, subtitled in common, are the words, Travelers of Riverweld. The sigil falls into the water and the text vanishes as we fly up over the city past canals and the watery alleyways. We see sunburned people of dark and light skin from faraway lands selling their wares. A man with a lute stands among them, singing a story of faraway lands and strange creatures. The people see his foreign clothes and bright eyes as he entrances them with songs in a language they do not speak. They toss copper and silver pieces into his waiting hat. Finished now, he smiles and with a flourish drinks a vial and spits out a gout of flame. The image freezes and the words Godan, played by SF, appear. The fire covers the screen, engulfing the words, and when it recedes, we are in a large stone hall filled with books, floating gilded couches, and staircases. A strong young female half-elf with striking green eyes and red and silver robes stands in the center of the room. She snaps her fingers again and again and again. Each time, another torch sparks to life, lighting up the room. When the last torch is lit, we see her face. She sits at a desk and unfurls a large piece of parchment. Ayana, played by CG, is written in the top corner. The words vanish as we tumble down another dark hallway to a laboratory. Tinctures bubble and we see several creatures nailed and pinned to plaques for study. A young woman in dark blue robes with purple and pink hair studies a legless zombie. It thrashes and reaches out to her, but its hands are lashed to the table. She stands just out of reach, taking notes. We look over her shoulder and as she is drawing an anatomy sketch of the creature, just below the drawing are the words, Sage Blackwell, played by A.L. The words in the sketch blur into lines and then form a map of a building. We look up from the map to see a halfling with a gruff face and a day or so of stubble. He runs his fingers over the map and smiles. He pulls up the hood over his head and motions behind him. As he looks back, we see several other figures don their hoods as well and step out onto a crowded boardwalk. They walk as a group past a wanted poster with the face of the same stubbly halfling on it. The name Cormac of the Bilge, played by SP, written there. He pulls the flyer down and crumples it up, tossing it into the canal. We follow the paper as it floats away, getting pulled into pipes and eventually spit out of a fountain in the small shrine. A tall, well-built half-orc sits nearby the fountain meditating. Incense smoke floats around him and the small horned amulet around his neck glows golden. He exhales and stands, taking up his armor and weapons. He bows to the shrine and exits into the street, filled with purpose. The words written on the shrine behind him say, Bruise, played by N.M. 
He walks past the words and into the city, past parks of tall trees with her roots dangling into the water. A diminutive gnome sits in the park, her brown eyes taking in all the people, smells, and sights around her. A black raven lands beside her and begins to peck at the planking that she sits on. She is a hunter in a strange forest full of dangerous, unpredictable animals. But she sits, unmoving, her small feet dangling above the water. She lowers her hand into the canal and pulls it out quickly, holding a small fish, which she quickly plucks the fins off of with a dagger and hands them to the raven. The words chives, played by J.B., are written on the sides of the floating lanterns that slide past her in the water. The words come apart as the small lanterns float away into the evening dark. We see the city of Riverweld, its people, the oppressive heat, and the different cultures come together on Lake Matsaya, all having traveled far to be part of this metropolis on the water. Adventure, fortune, and peril await these travelers of Riverweld. The view pulls back over the city and zooms in on our party as we find them outside of a warehouse having just recovered from a fight with the Senzoku fighters of the Fa Society. So now that you've heard it, let me go through the format of why I wrote it like that and the different steps that I take whenever I'm writing a new set of opening credits. So I basically start out by describing something, usually a flyover shot. I try to spend about a paragraph doing that and that's just sort of an arbitrary amount of time. If you feel like you can describe the setting that your players are gonna be jumping into a little bit easier or a little bit faster, go for it. Each subsequent paragraph is focused on one specific player and everybody at the table is gonna be focused on them, they're gonna hear what's going on and it's really cool because if you're a player and you're sitting at a table listening to the GM describe how your character is portrayed in that world, it can be kind of fun. It's also really empowering. You're validating your players because as you're describing them in that universe, everybody at the table is focused on them. It gives that players a sense of pride and empowerment and focus that they can then put into playing their character during the campaign. So the final paragraph wraps up the description and cements the characters inside the world. As the song sort of trails off, you're going to describe where your players are and how things are going to start from that point on. You might have the camera zoom down onto their last location at the end of the previous play session and have play pick up from there. It's a really nice way to add a seamless transition other than just, okay, let's play D&D. So now we're gonna talk about something really important, which is the theme song. I like to choose something that is the same length of time as the total elapsed reading time of the opening credits text. I'll write a description that is the best that I can do and I feel good about it and then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna read it out loud to myself enough times to where I like the way it sounds and I like the way it's delivered. Once I've done that, I'm going to read it again, only this time I'm going to time myself and I might do it two or three times just to get an average time. So once I've done that, I'm gonna take the time to choose a song that has the same amount of time, roughly, as the total elapsed time of the read through. And the good part about that is that there's so many music services available now compared to when I was younger, I had to just go hunting for CDs in order to do this. Uh, it's really easy to find a song that works for you. Something to keep in mind is you don't wanna choose a song that has lyrics. So try to choose something that doesn't have any kind of singing or anything in the background other than instruments. And maybe if there is a vocalist, they're not actually singing words. Uh, the opening to Ori in the Blind Forest is a good example of that. A good place that I liked to look when I was younger, before things like Spotify and Apple Music, was uh, movie scores. Not soundtracks, but scores. The difference between a score and a soundtrack, for those of you that don't know, is that a score is just the orchestral stuff that gets played in the background, and it's generally not actual songs like you would hear on the radio. In my experience, I don't like to go over three minutes in my descriptions, and the reason for that is because players can get a little bit bored, especially if you have a really large party, like more than six players, uh, the first player who heard their description read first might get a little bit bored by the time you get to the end. Describe your players in the best way that you can, but keep it tight, keep it short, and keep it punchy. If you're wondering how you can describe this world that you're trying to present in these opening credits, go back and watch the episode I made about how to use your setting better and talk about how to describe different senses. I'll leave the link somewhere on this screen. I'm not sure where it'll end up, but anyway. Because you're doing this in a role-playing game setting, you don't just have to describe the visuals of opening credits. You can describe the sounds, you can describe the smells, you can describe the feelings. The thing about opening credits is the more you learn about the characters in the campaign that you're running, the better you're going to be able to describe them in each subsequent session. 
One thing that I didn't do in this particular opening credits sequence, but I've done in other ones, is try to include the description of something really cool that a specific character did. I remember in another opening credits sequence that I had, whenever the Archer character showed up, I like to describe how she took down an entire like group of goblins with three arrows within three turns. We see Inesea in the background dropping arrow after arrow after arrow and goblins falling and falling and falling and the camera looks up and sees her and zooms in on her shooting another arrow right into the camera lens and it cuts to the other character. That type of description really lets the players know that what they've done in the past mattered and was really that cool. So if you're doing opening credit sequences and you want to evolve them each time that your players actually sit down at the table, try to include some examples of really interesting or cinematic things that happened during previous play sessions so that your players not only get the chance to feel like the focus of the party is on them, but they get to relive those really amazing moments that they were responsible for again and again and again. I also want to put a personal note in here. I don't like to read flavor text. I think it pulls me out and it pulls my players out of an environment, but that's just a personal preference. I have improvised opening credits before, but I'll say from my own experience, writing them down actually makes a big difference because it gives you a better delivery. So that's opening credits. I have always found that it's a lot of fun for my players and for me. I really want to know what you think about this. If you do something like this, please, please, please leave a comment below. I really want to know how different people actually engage their players when you sit down. Is it something like this or is it something completely different? Thank you so much for watching. If you want to follow us on Instagram, that would be great. You can see the link probably slipping by right here. The other thing that we want to encourage you guys to do is to hit the subscribe button and the like button. I want to grow this channel and I want to try to get as many of these out. But thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for being here. One thing I wanted to say before I go is to talk a little bit about perfection. A lot of us that do these games really want to do the best we can and we want to be perfect in every sense of the word. And it's important to know that perfection is impossible. Perfection isn't the thing that you're after. What you really want to be doing is enjoying playing the game. A lot of us take the time to build these amazing worlds and write these incredible stories that a lot of our players may not get the chance to experience because we're so wrapped up in wanting to tell those stories so perfectly, we never give everybody the chance to actually play them. So remember, if it's not perfect, no one's gonna judge you. And if they do, maybe these aren't the people you need to be playing with in the first place. Remember, if you give your players a chance to play the game that you've spent so much time working on, it may not go perfectly but you're still gonna to get to play the game, and that's what matters. Thank you so much for being here, and remember, take care, be kind, and have fun adventuring. See ya.